What's up, YouTube? It's Dr. Sideways here. I'm going to be teaching you all how to convert an RB25 electronic speed sensor over to a cable-driven speed sensor. You're typically going to see this on R32 platforms where they utilize a cable-driven speed sensor with a stock cluster and you're wanting to switch over to RB25 trans. But not only does it not only just apply to that, it can be applied to whatever platform you want to. More or less what you're doing, you're taking this speed sensor here that we purchased and we're going to be converting it over be able to utilize, be utilized and installed into the RB25 trans. There's a couple modifications that you need to do. Um, it's going to be swapping the red cog over um, to where the black would be. Also, the retaining clip, you have to machine down a spot for that clip to stick into the side of the sensor. And as you can see here, this is why we're switching the red over to where the black it was. Not only is it larger, but it has more teeth. The red one is what actually comes out of the RB25 from the factory. This black one here is actually, we're going to be losing that. We're just going to be utilizing the housing of that sensor. Um, so the first thing that you need to do is go ahead and pop off this circlip here, or the C-clip, whatever you want to call it. Get that off and then your cog will slide right off the shaft as you can see. And what you need to make note of is it's a half crescent moon shape there on the end that keeps the cog wheel from spinning on the end of the sensor. So you're gonna have to ultimately take this new sensor and machine that down on that shaft. Don't worry about it. I'll show you exactly how to do it later on in the video. Um, but the first thing we need to do here with this new speed sensor that we're gonna be utilizing the body from is we've got to figure out a way to get this black toothed wheel off. Um, you can cut it off, um, but you don't want to scar the shaft too much. So <laughs> it's very crude, but the best way that I've found to do it is just melt it off. Uh, believe it or not, the plastic really isn't that strong and it melts right off with relative heat. Um, it does take a little bit of time doing it, but it's nothing that's not you know, doable in your garage. This is actually just a little snap-on butane torch I got. Um, you can utilize just most anything, map gas, whatever. The one thing you want to do is make sure that you don't get it, the shaft too hot. It, it does have bearings and all in there. You don't want to get it getting so hot that it seizes up in there. So ever so often, you know, go ahead and make sure that it still spins freely, um, taking away the heat. But ultimately, your, your goal is to melt that off. Um, be careful while you're doing this. Obviously, don't go grabbing it, even with your gloves on. It's going to stick to your gloves and everything. But just continue to melt it off. It should come off with relative ease. If you grab some channel locks or something and try to crack it, I did notice that uh, it would pop off bits and pieces here and there. If this video has helped you so far, go ahead and smash that like button. And if you hadn't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. It helps me out greatly. That's my goal right now is to hit a thousand subscribers. That way I can live stream. We got a lot in store for this channel. We got a lot of upcoming videos and a lot of videos that are already in the works uh, that I'm working through editing. I'm soon to be uploading them. But uh, I appreciate everybody for just bearing with me. I've been swamped with so much work here lately that I hadn't had a chance to really get around to uploading. But for everybody that's already subscribed, I sure do appreciate it. And like I said, we got a lot of stuff in store, so just stick around. But getting back to the sensor here, as you can see, most all of the wheels came off so far. Um, you do want to heat it up. Once you get all the plastic off, continue heating it for just a little bit. What you're going to do is you're going to take the paper towel and go ahead and wipe any remaining off of the uh, shaft. And it should come off pretty daggum clean. Uh, the oils from the plastics should have already broken the bond between the plastic and the actual metal shaft. So you should have <laughs> what looks close to like a nonstick surface on, on it if you've done it right. So we're going to do a little housekeeping here get our work area cleaned up we go ahead and change out my paper towels on my tray and get back at it in just a moment here okay 
Got some fresh paper towels here. All right, so basically what we're looking at right here is the shaft has a knurl on the end. It is a complete circle on the end. If you remember back to the RB25 speed sensor that I had taken apart, it has this half crescent moon shape on the end of it. You're gonna have to transfer that notch over to the new sensor and don't get scared yet, it's pretty easy. So there's just gonna be a couple measurements that I'm gonna write on the, the cloth here that's gonna show you exactly how far down you need to machine down or grind down or whatever process you're using. I personally just used a Dremel tool and ground it down and then I used a hand file to finish up and get that true 90 degree there in the elbow. But you're going to want to mic your wheel just to make sure. Do leave a little bit of material in there so that it does fill into the spots of the knurl on the new sensor shaft. Uh, you don't want it setting in there loose because that's going to defeat the entire purpose. Um, you're not going to be running the C-clip on this setup. You're going to basically do it doing what had came off of the wheel. You're going to be heating up the shaft and you're going to be pressing this red one on. But only after you've machined down this crescent moon onto the new shaft. So the two measurements that you're going to end up with is 13 millimeters. That's going to be from the face of the shaft down. That's going to be the distance in which you need to grind down that crescent moon. This is taken in account for the amount of the shaft that protruded on the last sensor, a couple millimeters in which that C-clip clipped onto the end of it as the shaft had passed through the red toothed wheel. So with you no longer running that C-clip and using a press fit or a heated press fit, the two measurements that you need is 13 millimeters and 2 millimeters. 13 millimeters is from the tip of the shaft down. So at the very leading edge of the shaft, you're going to measure 13 millimeters back. And that's going to be the distance how far down you're going to have to grind down. The 2 millimeters is the depth into the shaft in which you're going to go. So it's 2 millimeters from the, the surface down towards the center line of the shaft if that makes sense so basically you have a two millimeter high notch in that guy i'm just using a dremel tool here as you can see just grinding it down some you know if, if you're paranoid go ahead and keep taking some measurements as you work just to make sure that you're good you do want it to be a true 90 degrees you don't want to have any taper to that surface that you're putting onto it now it's going to defeat the the purpose of having that notch there if you do have any taper or if it's truly not 90 degrees Alright guys, we just finished up our shaft here. I did use a hand file to get that true 90 degree end stop there. So you have a nice 90 degree break there. It will aid in whenever you're pressing on the red toothed wheel. Alright guys, so everything looks good. So we're going to move into the next phase of this process. We're going to go ahead and heat the shaft up 
don't get it glowing, but do get it hot. Because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be pressing on the red wheel onto the shaft now. So go ahead and get it nice and hot. Get your work area cleaned up. Go ahead and continue to heat it up. If you made it this far through this video, go ahead and smash that like button. <laughs> this turned out to be quite a long video, so I apologize for that. I did want to be pretty thorough with it though, because there seems to not be very much information out there on the internet for doing this, so I figured why not. I had to stumble through this process, so there was a lot of editing in it. You're going to start seeing this chef turn close to like a neochrome or like a burnt titanium look. That's whenever you know you've got it hot enough. Just don't forget that there are bearings in that shaft there or that the shaft rides on inside this housing. So be careful whenever you're getting it that hot. But you want it hot enough that you can slide this on. As you can see, you go ahead and slide that new wheel on. You're going to slide it all the way up to the point in which the the end of the cog here, the red cog, you want it flush with the end of the shaft. That's whenever you know that you went far enough. And there it is, boys. Your new speed sensor. So, the last phase of this guy, you see this notch up here. This notch is what the key, or the lock, should I say, that holds the speed sensor in. So what we're gonna have to make note of is that on this guy this little keyway slides into this and holds it into the side of the trans well the only problem is is looking back to the way the the old one mounted in there it did have a tab on it and unfortunately it broke off while i was trying to get this guy out for some reason these guys seem to be almost impossible to get out even with heat i still had issues getting this speed sensor out of the trans so I don't know what's going on with that. But anyways, we did get it out. What we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to transfer this notch over to the opposite side on the housing. As you can see, this little dimple, nipple looking thing here on the side of the shaft. Well, the orientation of the old one was, if you look it on screen, is to the right of the, the speed sensor. Well, on the new speed sensor, in which we've been working on, the little notch there, is on the complete opposite side. So you're gonna have to transfer that little notch. What I ended up doing was just setting up a mic, getting a depth from the top of the sensor there down to the leading edge of the, the notch. And I'm just gonna scribe a little mark on the other side. I took a Sharpie and just laid out some stuff as if it would be like layout die. I don't know if you know what that is, but just throw it on there so you can see your scribe mark. You're gonna set the depth in reference to the other side, so the distance from the shoulder down to the top side of the, let's see right here, this is what I'm talking about. So the shoulder of the speed sensor down to the edge of the notch. Go ahead and scribe your side there. It's gonna be the top mark and you're gonna flip it around and set your width there, transfer that to the other side and you're also going to need a one final measurement and that's going to be how far down the very bottom of that notch is. I know it's not very helpful here with me doing a voiceover on this, I already haven't done it but if you can see I'm setting setting up the how far down I need to machine that down. And what I ended up doing here was once again using a Dremel tool with a cotton wheel this time. Just made it a lot easier and then I went back in with a hand file and finished it up.
All right, guys, we're finishing up this grinder here. We're gonna take this hand file and finish it up. That way we have a true nice surface here. Also getting rid of all the burrs and stuff around the edge there. It is quite a nice fitting part, so you don't want any burrs left behind. But this is what we've ended up with. Turned out pretty nice. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want it to be in the same, same depth and all. Because your little keyway there is going to sit in there. Just verify your, your height is the same from the left to the right. In this case, it is perfect. There's your little keyway. Just make sure it fits in there, and it does. And you're set, man. Appreciate you watching. Thank you.